Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for calling this hearing. Thanks to the witnesses for being here. Mr. Sternfels, if I could just start with you. Did I hear you say in your opening statement, I'm going to quote you now, we have the industry's most rigorous client selection policy? Did I get that right? We believe that to be true, Senator. Well, how is it then that you end up with so many clients who are state-owned Chinese corporations hostile to the United States? Uh, thank you, Senator. So the basis for my uh, answer was we've invested over $700 million over the last several years um, to put in place a rigorous client selection process that looks at a whole series of factors. Uh, well, let's, let's talk about some of your clients. Like the China Communications Construction Company, this is a firm that is blacklisted by the United States government. This is a state-owned enterprise that is responsible for building artificial islands in the South China Sea, probably in direct contravention of international law, certainly in direct contravention to United States security interests. You helped them develop their five-year plan. Why is that a good idea? Senator, our work in China uh, overwhelmingly works with uh, multinational companies, including many of those being U.S. Uh, and private sector. No, actually, China. you've advised 22 of the 100 biggest state-owned companies in, in China. That's according to the New York Times. Let's talk about another one, the, the Chinese Ocean Shipping Company. That's a state-owned conglomerate that's played a key role in China's naval expansion. I'm quoting from NBC News here and Beijing's bid to extend its global reach. This company has been given special status by the CCP and forms the core of China's defense industrial base. This company has provided logistical support to the Chinese Navy's escort operations in the Gulf of Aden, and experts say, I'm still quoting, it serves as the maritime logistical arm for the People's Liberation Army. You're advising them. How much money did you make on that contract? Uh, no, Senator, we're not advising them. Neither did you ever advise them? Historically, we advised on none of the topics that um, you had highlighted. You, d you didn't advise the Chinese Ocean Shipping Company? Not on the topics you described, Senator. Why is it a good idea to advise them at all? They're a state-owned enterprise engaged in activity directly contrary to the security interests of this nation. And they're no longer a client of ours, sir. Why did you advise on 22 of the 100 biggest Chinese state-owned enterprises? That number I don't believe is accurate, Senator. It doesn't have anything to do with money, does it? I don't believe that number is accurate, Senator. How much money do you make off the United States government? I don't know the size of our work with the U.S. I uh, do. government, Senator. In 2021, you made more than $850 million in consulting work for the federal government with the Department of Defense as your top client. When you bid for those government contracts, did you disclose your work for these Chinese state-owned enterprises that were conducting activity adverse to our national security? Did you disclose it to the Department of Defense? Senator, we take uh, OCI incredibly seriously and have even gone beyond what is required around disclosures. So that's a yes? Um, we take it incredibly seriously. We made all appropriate disclosures, Senator. Uh, I'm happy to come back to you on any, any details uh, specific to the work that we do on the Department of Defense. That's, that's not what, that is not what news reports have found and news agencies who've looked into this. In fact, to quote NBC News again, and bidding on contracts with the Department of Defense, the U.S. Navy, Customs and Border Protection, you did not disclose your work with Chinese enterprises in apparent conflict of interest. A report in 2021 showed, December 2021, that you admitted to providing services only for provincial and local governments in China, but not for the central government in China. My question is, why should you be able to get any contracts in the United States government? If you're going to advise foreign nations who are hostile to us and make gobs of money off of them, why should you be getting U.S. government contracts? Senator, we've never worked with the Chinese Communist Party or the central government in China, to the best of my knowledge. You're working with state-owned enterprises. This is, this is, China's not a democracy. They own these companies. These companies are doing the bidding of the Chinese military, and you're making money off of it, hand over fist. My question is, I guess if you want to do that, I, I guess it doesn't violate the law. But I just wonder, why is it that you should then be able to turn around and make $850 million in one year alone off the American taxpayer? I mean, explain that to me. Senator, um, our work with the federal government, uh, we stand behind. Uh, we bring... Well, I'm sure you do. It's incredibly lucrative. That's the problem. You make gobs of money off of our enemies, and then you turn around and you make gobs of money off of us. It's outrageous, frankly. Listen, you shouldn't be doing any work with the Chinese Communist Party and any enterprise that they own or have, have some share in. You shouldn't. And if you were serious about ethics, you wouldn't be doing it. But it's particularly outrageous that you then make money, almost a billion dollars in a year, off the United States government, including the Defense Department. 
Now, I, am go I have introduced a law that would prohibit you from doing just this, and I will continue to push it until we get a vote on it. Now, let me ask you about one other thing since I've got you here. And I have to tell you, since I'm, I represent the state of Missouri that has been absolutely devastated by the opioid crisis, and I know you don't know a lot about that because speaking of money, McKenzie has made an unbelievable amount of money off of the opioid crisis. Let me ask you about this New York Times report, which found that McKenzie proposed paying a $14,810 bounty to pharmacies for each opioid overdose. Is McKinsey proud of that work? Senator, uh, our work was designed to actually reduce opioid abuse. Really? Let me ask you about this. I think we've got a poster of this. We sell hope in a bottle. This is an advertising campaign you came up with. We sell hope in a bottle. That's for opioids. Hope in a bottle. You help Purdue Pharma market them to children. The Massachusetts Attorney General has filed a lawsuit that has all of these disclosures in it, describing how McKinsey consultants recommended and pushed Purdue to turbocharge OxyContin sales. McKinsey urged the Sacklers, owners of Purdue, to make a clear go, no go decision to turbocharge the sales engine. The consultants pushed the Board of Directors to turbocharge the sales engine to drive up the sale of opioids that is killing people left and right. Is McKinsey proud of that work? Senator, as I had stated in the House, um, we, uh, we, saw, we were too slow in seeing the epidemic unfold around us. You helped uh, cause the epidemic. Our, no, Senator. Uh, really? You don't think that helped cause the epidemic? You don't think marketing these drugs to doctors and children helped cause the epidemic? You don't think you have any part in that? Senator, what I can say, including the state of Massachusetts, is we were the first to actually reach a settlement with all, all states. Well, sure. I mean, <laughs> sure. When you're over a barrel, <laughs> what are you doing for victims right now? Senator, we've reached agreement with the states and municipalities. Have you set up a compensation fund? Are you sharing some of your profits with them? Senator, the, the settlement details are public. Well, I'm, I'm asking you. I mean, have you, have you set up a compensation fund? Share some of your prodigious profits with the victims who Senator, our whose lives you help destroy. Our substantial settlements go to exactly that cause. You know, I've sat here and I've listened to your responses to my colleagues, and it's, it's the same old thing over and over. You don't want to be accountable for anything that you do. But I tell you what, this is unforgettable and, frankly, unforgivable. And your work right now, taking money from this government as you help the Chinese Communist Party, is absolutely unforgivable, and I will not rest until it is illegal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Senator Hawley. Senator Hassan. Well, I want to thank you, Chairman Blumenthal and Ranking Member Johnson, for holding the hearing and for leading this inquiry into the efforts of the Saudi Arabian Crown Prince to influence U.S. policy and uh, the impacts that it has on our national security. Um, I want to just note for the record uh, that, as uh, Mr. Sternfels well knows, uh, that I join Senator Hawley in my concern about McKinsey's role in the opioid epidemic. Uh, we have passed some legislation that needs to be fully implemented to require more transparency in similar situations. Uh, but let's turn to the issue at hand today. Congress has a really well-established right to compel documents and testimony, including from United States companies. And I just want to be clear for the public here. The Supreme Court of the United States has held that our Constitution prohibits United States judicial interference with the issuance of congressional subpoenas. So a court in this country can't interfere with congressional subpoenas. So I would just, yes or no down the line, I just want to make sure we have this on the record. Is it true that your companies refuse to comply with this committee's subpoena, citing an injunction from a Saudi Arabian administrative court, a court that is notoriously not independent and under the direct influence of the Saudi regime? So please, yes or no, we'll start with you, Mr. Lesser. Senator, we've complied to the extent that we can given the situation that we're placed in. So that is a yes, you are taking the Saudi Arabian's court's direction over this congressional direction, Mr. Sternfels. Senator, we're, we believe we're in the process of complying with the subpoena in this subcommittee and we'll continue to do so. 
But you are still uh, letting the Saudi Arabian court uh, govern how you are complying, if you are complying. Mr. Klein. Senator, thank you for the question. We are complying. We intend to comply fully. Uh, and we intend to continue to press uh, all avenues to ensure our full compliance. So that means, I just want to be clear here, if you aren't successful with the Saudi Arabian courts, you're going to fully comply and just um, decide that uh, the United States Congress has authority over a United States company and that you're going to follow our law. If the Saudi Arabian court doesn't go your way, you're going to still follow the law here and fully comply. We are entirely hopeful that we will resolve all aspects uh, of the legal issues in Saudi Arabia, and we have intended to comply with this U.S. subpoena from the beginning, and we intend to comply going forward. I will take that as a you will uh, continue to allow the Saudi Arabian Administrative Court to uh, govern your response. And Mr. Kiri. Senator, we will fully comply with the subcommittee subpoena, and we'll take the, we're accelerating that process uh, every day, but we will fully comply with the subcommittee subpoena. Regardless of what the Saudi Arabian courts we will, we decide. Will fully, we will fully comply, Senator. Okay, just let me be clear for those who didn't give the last answer. By refusing to respond to this committee's subpoena and request for a legal justification for your refusal, your firm's appear to have placed your loyalties to Saudi Arabia above your loyalty to the United States of America, our national security, and the principles of transparency. Uh, I also heard your discussion about the risk assessments you do before you decide to take on a particular client. And one of the things a good legal department does in a massive company with lots of resources is that they look at the law of the jurisdiction that you want to do business in, and if it says, uh, that they might give you trouble with complying with the United States subpoena from this Congress, you might decide not to do business there because that's a high risk. And the fact that you decided anyway seems to me to say that you don't take the authority of this Congress very seriously. So now to Mr. Sternfels and Mr. Lesser. Both McKinsey and Boston Consulting Group do work in China, which, like Saudi Arabia, does not have an independent judiciary. I am concerned that if Congress were to subpoena information from McKinsey or BCG or its work in China or on behalf of the Chinese government, that a Chinese court could also try to block compliance with that subpoena. So to the two of you, if a Chinese court blocked compliance with a congressional subpoena, would you refuse to respond to the subpoena? Mr. Lesser, yes or no? Senator, we're doing everything we can to reply to the subpoena as fully as we can and specific to China. We have very clear guidelines in of the kind of work we do and don't do. So it's if a Chinese court careful. tried to block your compliance with the subpoena, you would ignore the Chinese court or do your best to get them to change their mind, but ultimately you would comply with the subpoena from this Congress regardless of what the position of the Chinese government is. Senator, we do our best to comply in every situation and follow the laws of all the countries in which we work. That is, that is what we have tried to do here, and we, we are incredibly respectful of this subcommittee and its subpoena, and we are continuing to work to be able to fully meet your request. So let me ask Mr. Sternfels again. The Chinese government tells you you may not comply with the subpoena from the United States Congress. What are you going to do? Thank you, Senator. And I'd um, start uh, with the, um, reaffirming we don't work uh, with the federal government in, uh, in China. We have very tight client selection policies. All right. I, I'm um, going to stop yeah. you just because my time is limited. Um, the Chinese government runs the businesses in China. So let's just be very clear about that the line you're trying to draw just isn't there. 